Hello my lovelies and welcome to today's book. So we are going to be learning about deserts. So I have this great book called Living Habitats, The Big Picture Living Habitats. Now it explores lots of different habitats, um, all sorts of different ones, so not just deserts but also rainforests, and grasslands as well and it has lots of beautiful um, illustrations. That's our introduction page here. There's a world of habitats, because there are all sorts of different habitats all over the world. Um, and so you can explore lots of different ones. Now, I'm not going to read the whole book today, because it's a lot of information, um, and this might be a bit much all at once. I'm going to dip into the book at other times during the year, so later on when we do an, our animals topic, I might record some more about the rainforest for instance, um, but for today I'm going to read the section on the desert and also on the Arctic because the Arctic is a kind of cold desert. When we think desert we always think of a really hot sandy place, but the Arctic and Antarctica are very very cold deserts. So that's what I'm going to do for this book today. So really lovely book, it's quite a new discovery for me, it's a new book, I do love a new book, um, my ever expanding bookshelf. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a new discovery. Um, and let's have a look inside, it really are lovely illustrations of our beautiful precious world. Now as we go in, we've got the author's name, so it's written by John Richards and illustrated by Josie Blocks. Got a contents page, so this is a non fiction book. Okay, it's not a story book, non fiction book, it gives us information. So, at the contents page, we can use a contents page to find particular parts in or particular sections of a book. Um, now, we have these in non fiction books because with a non fiction book, you don't necessarily need to read it cover to cover. Now, you can do, you might want to just totally read the whole book, fully immerse yourself in it and enjoy all the information that it has to offer. But sometimes you just want to look something up or just find out about one particular thing, um, which is what we're going to do today. So we're going to learn about the desert. So what you do is you think, okay, right, what, what's the bit I need to look up? What's the bit I need to find out about? You find that section and the contents page will tell you which pages to look on to find that section of the book. So we're looking for desert to start off with. Desert 10 to 11, so we want pages 10 to 11. So let's find pages 10 to 11. Oh, okay. That's our introduction here. We'll start off with the introduction though before we go to pages 10 to 11. Okay. A world of habitats. Earth is a planet of huge contrasts from arid desert to dense forest and icy polar regions. So contrast when things aren't very similar, okay? They aren't the same, they can be quite different. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I cannot get rid of that cough. These variations produce a broad range of habitats, each with their own amazing plants and animals. We've got the tropical zone. The equator is an imaginary line which runs around the middle of Earth, either side of Either side of this are the tropics, where the weather is usually hot all year round. There is often a lot of rain in the tropics, but there are also many dry regions. Then you have the temperate zone. The temperate zones are found to the north and south of the tropics, so north and south if you think of the earth. Regions in this zone are usually experience four seasons in a year, spring, summer, autumn and winter. So that's us in the UK, the United Kingdom, we have four seasons, don't we? We know our seasons. Then you've got the polar zone. The polar zones lie at the northern and southern limits of the world. Conditions here can be very cold, especially during winter, when the sun may not rise for days at a time. Goodness gracious, imagine days at a time without seeing the beautiful sunshine. So north is the Arctic, south is the Antarctic. North Arctic's where you find the polar bears. South Antarctic is where you find the penguins. Right, extreme habitats. Habitats. Oh. Living things have evolved to survive in some of the most extreme conditions on the planet. These include the scorching heat of deserts, crushing pressures at the bottom of the ocean, 
or the freezing cold of polar regions. So it's amazing how animals have evolved to survive in different environments. So we've got some fun facts at the bottom, all the some facts about the different temperatures. So 56.7 degrees Celsius, the highest temperature ever recorded on Earth, and that was in California, USA. So if you think like when it gets really hot in the summer, we're like, oh my goodness, too hot, can't do anything. In this country, that's about 30 degrees. So that was way hotter than that. Uh, minus 89.2 degrees, the lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth. And that was in Antarctica, the South Pole. So freezing temperatures are zero degrees. So that was way, way, way below freezing. Um, somewhere in India is the place with the most rainfall in a year. That had a lot of rainfall. Um, then we've got... 29% is the amount of Earth's surface that is covered by land. So that isn't even, that's not even half. It's just over a quarter of Earth's surface which is covered by land. So a huge amount of the Earth's surface is actually covered by water. Wow. Of this, this 29%, 31% is covered by desert. Okay, so ooh, you don't even think about deserts that often. But actually, 31%, that's quite, a, that's more than a quarter of the land is covered by desert and don't forget that includes the north and south pole 33 percent is covered by grassland so a little bit more and 36 percent is covered by forest although if we keep chopping it down it won't be that any longer now i wonder if you can remember which page are we going to go to to learn about deserts was it page 10 yes here we go desert Desert, arid Atacama. Situated on the western edge of South America is the driest place on the planet. Now, this isn't the hottest desert. The hottest desert is the Sahara in Africa. Uh, and that goes across many different countries in Africa. Because remember, Africa is a continent. So a big piece of land made up of lots of countries. But uh, the Sahara goes through many different countries in Africa, I think around about 10. Um, but anyway, this desert is the driest one. Wow, the driest place on the whole planet. Yikes, wouldn't want to be there if you were thirsty, would you? So, South America. Rain shadow. So the Atacama Desert is found between two chains of mountains. The Andes to the east and the... Now, I have to look at how to say this. It's a little bit tricky and they couldn't all decide. Um, so the... Cordillera, Cordillera, that's my best try, um, Cordillera de, de la Costa to the west. Any wet air is forced up the mountains and the water it carries is dumped as rain on the mountainsides, leaving only dry air to reach the desert. So the rain all ends up on the mountains and the desert doesn't get any of it. Poor dry desert. Dry and barren. Much of the desert floor is covered by stones and salt pans, large areas of salt left behind after any water has evaporated. So do you recognise any of these animals that you can see at the moment, I wonder? Hmm. Which ones do you know? Which ones did you expect to see that you haven't seen? Which desert animals do you already know about? So, on average, the Atacama receives just 50 millimetres of rain a year. Wow, that is a tiny amount. I wonder if you can go and measure 15 millimetres into a container, because you will have a 15 millimetre container at home. If you go and measure that out, you will see how little rain this poor desert gets in a year. Some weather stations in Atacama have recorded no rainfall at all. So sometimes it just doesn't rain at all. Wow. Clear sky, the dry cloudless air and the high altitude of the Atacama make it the perfect place to study the night skies, the beautiful clear skies. With little light pollution, the view of the stars at night is pin sharp. So l light pollution is something that... Um, you get when you have lots of people living somewhere. For example, like in cities, lots of light pollution because all the lights are from all the buildings. 
um, and you also get it from airplanes and all that sort of thing as well. But if you're somewhere like over a desert, nobody's living there, who's got lots got, got lots of lights on or anything, so it's going to be very clear skies, uninterrupted by lots of human um, lights. So you can just study the beautiful night sky and study the stars. Coping with the dry. Few animals can survive such extreme conditions. Migrating birds visit seasonally to feed. Invertebrates include desert wasps and red scorpions. Andean flamingos eat algae in the salt flats, while humble penguins live on the coast. Mammals include the Darwin's leaf-eared mouse, leaf-eared mouse, that kind of sounds kind of cute, and the South American grey fox. In grassy areas, there are small herds of guanacos, guanacos and vicunas. Those are very similar to llamas. The rainfall blooms. You can see a few little plants here. Few plants live in the desert climate. These include herbs and flowers such as thyme and salt grass. Spiky cacti can live here and even some trees such as the pimiento. When rain does fall, the desert becomes carpeted with flowers that emerge to make the most of the water. Some parts of the desert are so dry that no animals or plants can survive there. Whoa! Temperatures during the day in the Atacama desert, desert can reach 40 degrees Celsius but drop to just 5 degrees at night. So that's an important thing to remember about deserts. It's very, very hot during the day, but actually at night they can get quite cold. So there we go, deserts. Which other animals did you expect to see? What facts do you know about deserts? Now we are going to go to the Arctic now. So let's look back at our contents page. The Arctic, page 28 to 29. 28 to 29. Here we go. The Arctic. Northern wasteland. The Arctic region is dominated by a large ocean that is covered in thick sea ice for much of the year. Surrounding this are the tops of North America, Europe and Asia, as well as hundreds of smaller islands. So remember, Arctic north, okay, up the top of the earth. Midnight sun. Earth is tilted as it orbits the sun as it goes around the sun. It's not like right up, it's slightly tilted. This means that in the depths of winter, the sun does not rise at all and the Arctic experiences darkness for days. Okay, the sun is still there, but the Arctic doesn't get its light because it's like the part of the world where the Arctic is, is tilted away from the sun, the, the top part of the earth. During the summer, the sun stays above the horizon, giving the region daylight for several days at a time. So it's like there's never any night time for days at a time. Weird. Plant life. Arctic plant life has to cope with freezing temperatures, poor soil and permanently frozen ground. Small shrubs, mosses and algae grow here. So not lots grows, but again, it is amazing some things still manage to grow. Bird life. The Arctic is home to water birds such as fulmers, guillemots and eiders. There are few land living birds such as the... Partimagan? Partimigan? Oh my goodness, testing my bird knowledge there. I don't know that one, children. You can go look it up. As well as birds of prey, including snowy owls. I definitely know that. Mammals. Coastal areas are home to seals, sea lions, and walruses. I love a walrus. They're so big, amazingly big, but I just think kind of cute as well. If you look out for um, stories in the news, children, then you will find that every now and again recently, over the last couple of years, there have been walruses visiting our shores around, around England and Scotland. Walruses have made long journeys, which has been rather unusual, um, to visit us. And they've been like landing on people's ships and sort of having like a little sunbathe and... Um, just lying around and being just on the coast and everything. People have been very surprised, but quite excited because you just don't often see walruses round here because they're, they're not really an animal that travels all the way down to down to where we are. They, they tend to stay really north, but no, we've had some exciting um, walru walrus visits. Uh, do look it up, BBC News, with your adults. Have a little look. There are some nice stories about walruses visiting us. 
Um, okay, and also orcas, no, also known as killer whales. Reindeer and huge musk osk live inland as well as arctic foxes and hares. Disappearing ice, this is sad. As climate change pushes global temperatures up, more of the sea ice is melting. With less pack ice to hunt on, polar bears are forced to travel to find food wherever they can, including in towns and villages. So there are some people who live in the Arctic, not like super, super, absolute north, 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 but still in the Arctic. That's not the case in the Antarctic. Okay, so here we go. We've got walrus, we've got seal, we've got some orcas, killer whales, we've got some polar bears, some reindeer, we've got all those different kinds of birds there. Um, we've got an Arctic hare, got an ox there, musk oxen. So the Arctic is home to 280 types of birds, 450 fish species, 130 mammal species. Wow. The name Arctic comes from the Greek word arctos, which means bear. And this refers to the northern constellation or Ursa Major, which is, makes the great bear. So that's a star constellation. You can't, it's a little bit hard to see on the video. But you can look it up online. It makes a bear. There's a little shape of a bear there. And it's a constellation you're supposed to be, look, be able to look up and see in the sky. Final fact. Arctic foxes and hares change the colour of their coats from white in winter to brown in the summer. Do you know why? I bet you do if you think about it. Right. Okay then. Well, that's all for today from our book. The Big Picture Living Habitats. I hope you learned some interesting things and enjoyed the illustrations. That's all for now. Bye.